get so mad, there's no control in me My thoughts get so bad, I'm like Oh God, here goes I lost all feeling from my head to my toes You said some shit that I can't let go So just stay tuned for the rest of the show Thank you so much for making the time to uh, to have this conversation and thank you Russell for making that introduction because um, I'll start with an introduction I've been running um, my little podcast for over a year now and even before that some of the conversations I was having was really around discrimination in the AV industry and how that makes people feel and um, although I'm a member of the women's council amongst other things uh, for Avixa our um, industry association I've always made it really clear that I don't just represent women or speak up for women there's discrimination comes in all sorts of shapes and sizes and forms and um, we can't negate um, other things that people are struggling with and mental health seems to be one of those things that actually transcends all of those areas of discrimination there isn't one person that I've spoken to who's told me a story about discrimination where it hasn't impacted their mental health. So it's a natural, this is a natural conversation for me to, to share with, with our AV community. So I'm really pleased to have you on board and I hope this will be the start of something uh, for our industry, fingers crossed. Um, but can I get you to introduce yourselves? Um, Dan, do you wanna start? Yeah, absolutely. Um, first of all, thanks for the invite. I really appreciate um, you inviting us um, on. So I'm Dan Rowe. Um, I'm not going to say my job title because it's terrible, um, but effectively I'm uh, what you'd class as kind of a regional manager for Andy's Man Club. Uh, in effect, what that means is I look after uh, currently 27 Andy's Man Clubs across the Northwest, Midlands and Wales. Um, and then I suppose you can you can split my role into kind of three parts really and one is looking after the existing um existing clubs so across those 27 clubs we probably have about 300 volunteers give or take and and see about maybe a thousand guys turning up a week across those um so just kind of managing them making sure that they're okay and supported and um and dealing with any issues that might arise out of, out of the clubs themselves uh, second part of my role would be focusing on new clubs um so where uh, where are we going to take people from? So where are we going to take our volunteers from? Where are we going to open strategically? Um, where are we, how do we find our venues? Um, and then everything from from that conversation to how do we then market uh, market those new clubs? Who do we need to get in touch with in the in the local kind of population? So everything from I suppose concept to delivery really in terms of uh, in terms of that teaser project manager to speak um and then the last part um is is kind of the commercial side of our role so obviously we're a, we are a charity um we're a donate fully donation led charity um and our, our charity is really focused on um raising awareness uh, that we exist i think our our biggest challenge and i'm sure we'll get into this is around the fact that most people don't know that we actually are around and, and exist and um there's some challenges around that so a big part of what we do is uh podcasts we do awareness talks um within organizations we work commercially with organizations as well um to, to really kind of get the um get our name out there so that everybody knows that that we're there to support the men within the community no matter where they are in the uk um so that that's a, a kind of a, a big part of the 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 role as uh as well so uh so my name is russell Harper and i've um i've been in the AV industry, I guess, for what 16, 17 years, maybe 18 years, um, for various different manufacturers through that time. Um, generally representing the manufacturer and supporting their business in uh, Europe, Middle East, and Africa. So people like Yamaha and Bose, and currently uh, Sound Control. Um, so, uh, but obviously, I've engaged with you uh, a number of times uh, through various different brands. So. Uh, uh, and I obviously other uh, brands are available is my caveat. <laughs> no, well, uh, only, the, only, only only the brands that I represent clearly. So um, yeah, but and obviously my connection here is that I you know I engaged with uh, Andy's Man Club and, the, and specifically the one that Dan um, ran uh, in Altrincham, and um, and hence that's how our uh, how my knowledge of this uh, of this uh, group has uh, has grown. Andy's Man Club is much more than what 
were listed as as part of the charity commission. So we're we're classed as a men's mental health and suicide prevention charity. And and the reality, and and I'm sure um Russell will be able to, to kind of back me up on 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 this is we're so much more than just that. Um the idea I think about Andy's Man Club, why it works so well, why it, and why it's really sustainable is is the fact that we create communities. We cre we create communities within communities. And all you need to do is look off the 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 back of what happens on a Monday. We're really simple. We're we're a place where guys can go and talk between seven and nine on a Monday on a Monday night every week. And what comes off the back of that is friendship, is going to the cinema together, going to gigs together, going to football together, doing whatever people want to do, whether that's go out for food, go out for meals, go to a pub quiz, what whatever that kind of might be, is you're actually creating really long lasting friendships. Um, and they're very different to normal male friendships because the friendships based on vulnerability and and that's just not something that you see within society and that's there's a huge uh, honesty around that isn't there yeah absolutely absolutely i think there's um it's generally the friendships based on that acceptance that you're you're willing to have a conversation that's a little bit deeper than you might traditionally have and and i think that's the that's probably the key part of this uh, is that everybody that turns up at that club is willing to listen and actually it's not one of those surface level conversations that you have down the pub or wherever it's actually there's a willingness to accept a deeper conversation I think that's really good just from what you've said and just thinking about and I know there's loads of definitions out there about mental illness and um and obviously that that is a, a huge scale um why do you think the third sector is so successful in doing this where your GPs, your local walk-in centres or, or counselling, the skills and, and all of that is so lacking in our social uh, network, our formal social networks? What makes the third sector so successful at this? Start with easy questions, eh? <laughs> um, because I'm just I, thinking of those numbers and I'm thinking of try and get a GP appointment. Yeah, you yeah. can't, and that and generally people think that's the first port of call. Yeah, yeah. and it, but but the irony of that whole thing is men won't generally go and try and no, get they won't. A, yeah. a GP appointment. They they won't even make that first step. I think it's a hugely complex issue first and foremost, and I think that and I, I'm a big advocate that everybody should go to the GP. Everyone should go to get counselling should they need some kind of thing and. I suppose you've got to look at it in a in a very very separate way. Um, so, what we as a charity do is very different to what the NHS offer and and can offer. So we're 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 what's classed as peer support. So the the, the kind of nuts and bolts of peer support is our guys turn up on a Monday, and they meet a whole bunch of other guys that are all going through whatever challenges they're going through within their lives. I think one of the challenges for for men and and I think for everybody but if we if we talk specifically about men because a I am one and b I work for a men's charity but when we think about that we think about anyone that struggles generally will feel lonely and isolated with that struggle because for whatever reason they'll feel that they're probably the only person that's going through that no one else is going to understand they'll feel the burden of well, if I talk to my partner or I talk to my family or my friends, they're going to maybe I'm worried about being judged about that I'm struggling with whatever that thing is. And and then the third thing is feeling weak, generally just feeling weak that you can't cope with what is society thinks you should be able to cope with because you're a man. And what happens at AMC is you get guys that that turn up and realize that they're not alone. They're not isolated. There's a group of X amount of guys within that room, times that by another 140 rooms that 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 exist across the country. And actually you go, well, hang on a second, there's over 3000 guys accessing our groups that are all going through challenges at different stages. So don't think for a second either that people walk through our door are suicidal or are struggling with mental illness or, or anything along those lines, because we see a real mixture. We see guys that walk through the door because they are struggling to make friends, because they feel a bit lonely, because they're socially a bit lonely, or 
that they're new to an area, they don't really know where to go, they don't play sport, they don't do all these kind of different things where you'd normally get friendships. You look at the way that um, people, a lot more people are working from home now. And listen, I'm a big advocate for, for working from home and, and I do work from home um, as well as working in an office as, as, as well. But if you're new to an area, you don't play sport, you work from home, so you don't have that social interaction from a work perspective. Where do you go and make friends? Where do, where do you where do you meet those people that you can go to the pub with or go to the cinema with and all these kind of different things? So I think there's loads of challenges and throw that into somebody that's not feeling particularly well within their own mental health. And that's an additional blocker and that's an ad additional um, issue. So I think where Andy's Man Club do, do well and, and, and a lot of the third sector do is they're actually picking up areas in which A, the NHS don't offer um, to an extent, we're starting to see more and more of that through social prescribing, which is it, which is important. But it's a completely different kind of service offering, and it just means that we can offer something that's much more consistent than than what the NHS can offer. But it's very very different as 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 well. You're not going to make friends by going to your GP, but the chances are when you go to when you go to Andy's Man Club, you will make friends. And a big part of I think what of people's struggles are is that loneliness and isolation in, with their issues the other issue that we have in the industry is a recruitment issue and um, getting the right people into the right roles and and so on and a number of people have told me that um, if they've been off with mental health issues or they've needed time out that has had a direct impact on their employability and their chances of progressing or being picked for things or promotions or whatever um again I don't have an answer for that other than you know what, what you've already said but I think I, how do I we deal with it I mean Dan I'm sure you've got a much better um, answer to, to the one that I've got but you know the idea that you're using um a, a that you're using a club like this for and let's face it Dan, it's a very therapeutic experience going through that engaging with other people listening to them them listening to you um and and um and actually seeing that you're not alone is very therapeutic it is a form of therapy and to see therapy as a weakness in your um character i think yeah but whether you're struggling with mental health or not or whether it's just actually it's actually um it's good practice to look at, look after yourself, and this is part of looking after yourself. And so, I don't see that. that that's the. I think that's the overarching message that I want to get through to more people. That I would like to see get through to more people. It's actually it's not a bad thing, you know. Um, going to something like this, and even if you are challenging yourself, if you've got if you've got mental um, uh, mental health challenges. The fact that you're going to something like this and the fact that you're in, um, engaging with services like that, that that's got to be a hugely positive that you're able to do that. And yeah. that's, and we've got to get across that stigma, you know, and I'm sure Dan's seen it across many different industries as well. So yeah, I think, I think in, in terms of organisations, yeah. um, people are much more likely to use a physical reason for being off of mental health than they are. For mental health um because of the stigma that's around and because of the way organizations change um how you change that is a very complicated and com well i say it's a very complicated and, and, and complex issue it, it's probably not it, it it's whether or not the leaders within that organization deal with and think it's an important topic um and 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 that's kind of the the be all and and, and end all with 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 regards to that if your leaders if your execs think that the organization should be a supportive one and, and it should talk about that, then the easiest and quickest way they can do that is by talking about their own challenges, about, about their own struggles, because I can guarantee there's not an executive out there that hasn't been through some sort of challenge, hasn't been through some sort of struggle. Um, and, and I'm not saying that they've probably dealt with it in the right way, but they'll have dealt with it somehow. And I think talking about that gives other people permission for, for doing that. And if we link that back to, to kind of Andy's Man Club, is by going to an environment if we look at where guy, where do guys go if they've got an issue where do they go and the reality is they're probably and i'm going to be a huge stereotype here but they're probably going to the pub 
Um, if they're going to the pub, they're probably drinking X amount of pints, whatever they whatever they drink. Is that the healthiest thing to then start offloading? That when you've got seven or eight pints in you, it's definitely not um, around that. Or if anything, it's just going to push that issue deeper down to 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 not be not be exposed. So what what Andy's man club does is by walking through the door there, as you realise everyone's talking. I mean, there's no expectation to talk. There's no requirement to talk. You can, we use a ball because, you know, we're blokes. Um, and the ball represents your opportunity to talk. It's really symbolic in that way. So when you've got the ball, that's your turn to talk. It's Everyone else is. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it also takes away another barrier that nobody realizes that it's taken away. Um, and I don't know what you two are like, but I know when I deliver talks and I'm stood up, I will. I I can guarantee that my hands are going everywhere, um, and I'm and I become quite conscious about what my hands are doing, um, purely because I'm talking about this issue. But if you think about sat in a circle with literally nothing, so you, there, there's no tables in front of you, there's nothing. You are you are as exposed and as vulnerable as you are going to be sat in a circle full of strangers then actually a barrier could be, well, actually, I don't know what kind of do what my hands and, and all this kind of stuff. So actually by holding onto a ball, it's it's symbolic in the way that you know that that's your turn to talk. But if you don't want to talk, if you don't feel comfortable, if it's not the right time for you, then passing that ball on, no one's going to say anything. No one's going to think anything differently of you. It's, it's, it's that kind of opportunity around doing that. But what you tend to find is... Um, because all of our facilitators will always answer the questions first. So, and the reason we do that for a couple of things, the facilitators, a big part is them using the club for them as well. It's really, really important that just because they're a facilitator, they're no different to anybody else. And, and that's important that they get to use that group. But it also sets the tone. So if you're there for the first time and the ball gets around to you and you're the seventh person that it's come around to you, and you've heard the previous six people talk about, like our first questions, how's your week been? And you hear six people talk about their week. And it's like, there'll probably be a realisation there. Now, whether you choose to talk or not is up to you as an individual. But there's actually a realisation there. My God, everybody's talking. No one's sugarcoating things. Everybody's talking. So in a way, it kind of, people feel and guys feel, and um, I'm sure Russell felt like this as well, as well as I did when I first went, was you feel like you've got permission. Yeah. And I think that, guys when it comes to talking about feelings and emotions and all this kind of yeah. stuff is we often feel like we we need that permission to talk and it's almost kind of um and our co-founder luke always talks about taking the mask off and and i think that within our groups we find that guys actually feel like they've got permission to take that mask off and be themselves with whatever their struggles are um and i think that's a, a hugely kind of important aspect that um people won't realize coming through our door that that's what's happening but we're a bit crafty it, we know that it, that's what happens it's interesting though isn't it because um the in in a, a normal social engagement with a load of guys you'll get people that a hijack conversations they dominate you know they take over they don't let you speak they don't give you that space to to talk Sometimes they don't even listen. You know, you will get guys, and I'm sure we all know them, some people that will talk to you, but they're actually thinking of what to say next. They're not actually listening to what you're saying. That might be the case, but it certainly doesn't feel like that when you're at this man club. There is a, there is a total sense of, I'm, I'm listening to you now. You were eight or nine guys in the inner circle, and we're all listening. And I think that's quite powerful. You know, is actually you're getting that sort of um, that that space to just yeah, I know people are actually listening to me now. You know, I don't ever slow up. No, I don't take shit. I got no love for the fakeness. If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this, I'll show up. I don't ever slow up. No, I don't take shit. I got no love for the fakeness. If you wanna play tough. And wanna hate this, I'll always show up and make a statement. I don't ever slow up, no, I don't take shit. I got no love for the fake is. If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this, I'll always show up.